fam. This is Miss V, and welcome to my show, Half Naked Conversations, where the vibe is always free. A space you hack your reality, a place you can be who you really want to be. Half Naked, baby. Half Naked Conversations. With Miss V and friends. Stay tuned! Wide away. I'm my lucky V, so I know it's going to be a great conversation. So we left off with Harold and his journey. And, and Harold, you know, one of the things uh, I, I want to include the rest of the guests here, uh, Steve and 27, but one of the things I want to kind of just touch base on is your memoir. And you're writing the story of your life. I just want to say, why? Why, Harold? Why, why write the um, story? And should we all, and I'm going to ask both of you, should we all be writing our memoirs? Uh, well, uh, what, uh, the, reason, the reason I'm, I'm, I'm writing it is because I've been encouraged to. And at the same time, it has taken me a long time to talk about my life uh, in the industry. Um, my memoirs are reflecting uh, about what it was like to be a young black man at 19, uh, stepping into a world that was a white man's world. You know, because the only time uh, uh, people of color were recognized uh, was when they were in front of the camera, like uh, Sidney Poitier, mm -hmm. um, Ruby Dee, you know, just to name a, a few, and I've had the privilege of working with her. Yeah. Um, Ozzy Davis, these people were, were iconic. Uh, but when it came to what went on behind the camera, it was mostly white people that were doing costuming, they were doing lighting, they were doing everything. So with this, um, uh, with this uh, affirmative action or, or minor minority labor, it was uh, a targeting young men and women of color that were, had some kind of interest in, in, in film that never had an opportunity. So this was an opportunity that was presented and myself, I already had started a career which was I wanted to be a fashion buyer within the fashion industry. That's why I went to the Fashion Institute because that was my goal. But as it turned out, um, I remember I went to Paramount Studios. I filled out an application. At that time, it was the employment, the, uh, the employment office. And now it's called HR, but at that time, the unemployment, the employment office, I filled out an application, and I was one of the people that was chosen to be a part of the program. And uh, when they called me, uh, they let me know that it is a year. So for one year, I had the privilege of going to the four major studios. I started at 20th Century Fox for three months at that time. They were finishing up Julia, which was on hiatus with Diane Carroll. I met her later in my life. Uh, uh, and then I went from there to uh, Paramount. They were doing, I was able to go on the set to, uh, when they were doing uh, the original Mod Squad, I met uh, Clarence Rudin the third. He and I ended up working together on a couple of projects in my later years. And then I ended up going to um, Warner Brothers. And at Warner Brothers, my first project as an apprentice costumer was The Skin Game with Lou Gossett Jr. and Tim uh, Garner. Mm -hmm. So it sounds like you had a, a lot of experience in, in, in a, a long time ago with with uh, with movies and show business. How how do you see um, things changing with with you know? Because I can think of you know now with YouTube and with everything right there. Everyone's got a video camera in their pocket. You know, like everybody's <laughs> got a video camera in their pocket. Yes. Sure. You know, like when I was when I was young, I remember when the first video, first person had a video camera. I was like, "Oh my God, what is this thing?" Yeah. So sure. now it's just like it's like a really good. It's like witchcraft. It's so how, how do you see? How do you see the 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 business or this videography changing now that everyone's got a video camera? It's um, you know what? It it's not as competitive as it used to be because mm. everybody can they can film you doing anything you want. Where when I when I came up in the industry, um, we didn't have access to cameras. As a matter of fact, I, I have one picture I can I consider it most one of the most iconic photographs in my entire career, and that's with Hollywood royalty, and that is uh, uh, Richard Whitmark. And I did the TV show Mad Again. So when I did that, 
um, they had uh, a studio photographers. They were the only ones that were allowed to have cameras on the set. I can remember when Polaroids were first introduced, it was the most exciting thing because prior to that, we had to write everything out. We didn't have the opportunity. I mean, back, back then, back the then, only yeah. people that had cameras were the establishment. Now that's everybody true. has yeah, cameras. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Right. That's what I'm right. saying. It has made it easier. Mm -hmm. um, it has made it easier for people to do things. I'm, I'm old school. I, I, like, I like going it the other way. Well, I'm new school. Um, so how do you feel about these? I was to say the uh, social media era when it comes to having a camera at all times and kind of movies phasing out and do you think costuming is kind of making its way out just because we got so much reality TV? Well, you know, yeah, yes it is. Yeah. When reality TV, when, that's a good question. When, when reality TV was first introduced, it was new. Um, and, and even when it was first introduced, costumers were not needed. Because you got to wear your own, and it was you wore what represented who you were, and that's how you were filmed. You know, um, today I think um, it's it. I watch these movies; everything is digital. Mm -hmm. Pause. Everything. Is All right, hold on, hold on, hold that thought. <laughs> This is Miss V, and this is my philosophy. I believe you create your reality, so be mindful of the words you speak. Hey fam, this is Miss B. I I believe you create what you speak. Half-naked, baby. Half-naked conversation.